Uh, thank you, Dr. Lanza, and uh, we do have some time for questions, about 10, 15 minutes, so uh, we'll have some questions. Okay. So, anyone have any questions? Yes. Okay. So, so the question was, was how long would it be before these are actually put into effect in human beings? So the answer to that is, is that it depends on the particular disease. As you know, as I mentioned, we're already starting in the eye for macular degeneration, but also we hope that they're going to get into the clinic for, say, lupus or multiple sclerosis in the next year or two. Uh, and then, of course, depending on the disease, it may take more time. So it's going to differ from disease to disease. Parkinson's disease. So she asked, what about Parkinson's disease? We know, that's an that's a, uh, excellent question, we can actually now make very large amounts of dopaminergic neurons, and in fact, these have been actually tested and made from embryonic stem cells, and they actually work in rodent models. So uh, I believe there are several groups, and we're actually working with some of them, that are hoping to get into the clinic for that as well. Yes? So the question was, is, is uh, how does, I guess, this playing out with the bioethics community? And, you know, I, I had actually started out in medical school, you know, trying to cure diseases and never thought I'd be having to deal with all these theological questions. But yes, at first, of course, some of, you know, I... I wasn't in a position to really be taken side with one religion or the other, but some of the uh, the religions obviously are opposed to d destroying the embryo. So I think we've solved the problem of destroying the embryo. There's still some objections to some groups to even IVF, to even using that approach. Uh, the new IPS cell technology, of course, circuit bypasses almost all those ethical objections. Yes. Actually, yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. So she was asking, you know, about we have this application and that. What about dementia, right? Alzheimer's disease. As a matter of fact, that's an exciting possibility. We're actually starting out right now with one of the top groups in the world. We, we do think there's very good reason to believe that these cells should be able to impact that. So we're starting that work right now. Yes. Okay. Yes. was, as you was mentioning, the, uh, the, the gower uh, that we had cloned, and then she was saying that an animal is dead, it's meant to be dead, you know, uh, there's some ethical questions there, and of course there are a lot of ethical questions. In that particular case, this was an endangered animal, and this was a cell animal that had just died, and so what we were doing was simply bringing back genes that would have otherwise been lost from the planet forever, and then reintroducing them. Uh, for extinct animals, Yes, that's a very real, serious question. I mean, you know, I don't know, you know, whether, who wants to have, you know, a Neanderthal or a woolly mammoth or a dinosaur. I mean, this is out of my pay raise uh, category, I should say. But, uh, but yes, I'm concerned. I mean, I, my feeling personally is, is that if the habitat still exists and we, for instance, like in the Bucato Mountain Goat, shot them to death just as trophies, and there's a way to, 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 to bring them back, you know, that we may have some bit of an obligation there. Uh, but you're right, we're now in a new world and some of those habitats aren't there. If you brought back the woolly mammoth, where would it be? What animals would it displace? You know, certainly for a T-Rex or a dinosaur, which is not very likely with this technology, that would pose more serious ethical questions. So she said, will people try to do that? Sure. <laughs> uh, but hopefully society will, you know, will put some rules in place, you know, to try to limit that. You know, it's the same with cloning. You know, it's illegal to do that. Certainly, you know, I'm personally uh, 
against you know cloning humans. Certainly, I think that there are serious ethical questions there and, and safety issues. And so, you know, you know, I, I think almost every reputable scientist in the world is opposed to that. Uh, at one point, there was the the World Health Organization tried to put in a global. Uh, laws to prevent that, but the Bush administration knocked it down. So, because uh, they, they were just trying to kill even the medical applications, but hopefully they will revisit that and and put some uh, some reason into this field. Yes. Yes. A uh, timeline on which neural cells. So yeah, so there are you know a number of uh, you know neural potential applications. You know, so there are oligodendrocytes and glial cells, and uh, as the woman mentioned, that you know, Parkinson's, the, neuro, the dopaminergic neurons. So all of those are actually on the front line because it turns out we can actually make those cell types easier than many other cell types. So those are actually now in preclinical testing, and I know there are groups that want to move those into the clinic. And we have some indications as well. What's that? Oh, how do you get on the list? Yeah, unfortunately, uh, clinical trials are painfully slow, and it turns out you start out with your safety studies and move through, but once they are announced, you know, they're usually po posted on uh, clinicaltrials.gov, and so, and, you know, and people will recruit. So for each of those indications, you, you may be made aware of them on that site or through, you know, uh, just people recruiting. Okay. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Um, I'm still in the process. What's that? Can you explain the importance of the base and the processes? I'm not sure what the. I'm. I'm, 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 I'm. Oh, tolerance. Oh, yeah, 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 because so he wants to know what's the importance of telomerase. Okay, so what happens is, is that our cells can only live a so, so many times. So they divide X number of times and then they will die, and that's built into the cell. And it turns out on the end of your chromosomes, there are little bits of DNA known as telomeres. And every time your cells in your body divide, they get shorter and shorter, and then when they reach a certain critical thing, the cells die. So we have death built into us. And Unlike the normal cells in the body, a cancer cell has telomerase, this enzyme that builds those telomeres on so they grow forever. And so when we talk about an embryonic stem cell or an IPS cell, they are telomerase positive, which means they're immortal, they will grow forever. But the second they start differentiating into a body cell, as to say a neuron or a blood cell, that shuts off and then they become mortal and the clock starts ticking. Right. So he was saying, is, is it safe to say that the adult has no telomerase in the body? In essence, yes. Any body cell, the telomerase has been turned off, and that's why we get older to a large extent, is that as we get older, these get shorter and shorter, and, and they, they biologically cannot go more than a certain amount. This is something known as the Hayfleck limit. Okay. Oh, yeah. In regards to... Uh there some research on AIDS and how it could possibly uh -huh. help with that to expand on that? Like what research has been done or what could be done with further technology expansion in stem cell research? Okay. So the question was is uh, you know, AIDS and, and how this might be able to help there. Uh, you know, we're not doing that work ourselves, but I mean again, uh, as you know, the AIDS virus, for instance, when it infects your, your immune cells, uh, it has to get in through uh, certain receptors on the cell. So what happens is, is that you can actually take a cell from a patient and you can knock out that receptor and then if you were able to make new immune cells, those cells could be transfused back into the patient and the body and the, the virus wouldn't be able to get back in. So, so that's, there's work like that actually underway. How, how far along is it? Uh, there, there's some other approaches that are doing similar that approach that actually have some pretty uh, exciting early data. Thank you. <laughs> yes. So the question is, is the non-destructive embryonic stem cell line, is that being used now or going to be used in clinical trials? So we actually have 
uh, lines now that are, are made in our GMP facility that are, that are up to snuff for uh, use in patients. And so we're, we have them and our intent is to use them in future clinical trials. We still need to go through the FDA and make sure everything's okay though first.